Hey, let's turn to Numbers 22. Today we look at, I think, one of the most interesting stories in all of Scripture, the story of Balaam. Balaam was one of those noteworthy Old Testament characters who, though not one of God's chosen people, was willing to acknowledge Yahweh was indeed a powerful God, but he did not believe in the Lord as the only true God. His story exposes the deception of maintaining an outward facade of spirituality over a corrupt inward life. Balaam was a man ready to obey God's commands as long as he could profit from doing so. Look at verse 4. Balaam was a sorcerer, one called upon to place curses on others. Belief in curses and blessing was common in the Old Testament times. Sorcerers were thought to have power with the gods. Thus the king of Moab wanted Balaam to use his powers with the God of Israel to place a curse on Israel, hoping that, by magic, God would turn against his people. Neither Balaam nor the king had any idea who they were dealing with. And why would God speak through a sorcerer like Balaam anyway? God wanted to give a message to the Moabites. And they had already chosen to employ Balaam. So Balaam was available for God to use, much as he used the wicked Pharaoh to accomplish his will in Egypt. <clears throat> Balaam entered into his prophetic role seriously, but his heart was mixed. You see, he had some knowledge of God, but not enough to forsake his magic and turn wholeheartedly to God. Although this story leads us to believe he turned completely to God, later passages in the Bible um, show that Balaam couldn't resist the tempting pull of money and idolatry. The soonest we see this would be a little bit later in chapter 31. What happens next is so wild. God let Balaam go, but he was angry about Balaam's greedy attitude. Balaam claimed he would not go against God just for money, but his resolve was beginning to slip. His greed for wealth offered by the king blinded him so that he could not see how God was trying to stop him. A lesson. Though we may know what God wants us to do, we can become blinded by the desire for money, possessions, or prestige. We can avoid, we can all avoid Balaam's mistake by looking past the allure of fame or fortune to the long range benefits of following God. And we got to talk about the donkey before we close. Balaam's donkey is on the road, he sees an angel refuses to move. Balaam beats the donkey repeatedly. The Lord opens the donkey's mouth and the donkey starts talking. You can't help but conjure Eddie Murphy's voice when, when he played donkey from Shrek. You know, when he says, what have I done to you to make you beat me three times? I'm not going to try to impersonate Eddie Murphy. Listen, donkey's not making waffles. He's mad. The truth is the donkey saved Balaam's life but made him look foolish in the process. So Balaam struck the donkey. We sometimes strike out at blameless people who get in our way because we are embarrassed or our pride is hurt. Let's be sure to keep our eyes open this week to see um, to the ways that God may be trying to get our attention. Otherwise, his method of getting our attention may become less and less subtle. You guys have a great day. Peace be with you.